Hey folks, everything new under the sun. Evolution Exposed. This is a eye-opening and eye-opening article about uh, evolutionary scientists, people who have a belief in evolution, um, and it's not true. And science doesn't confirm that evolution is true. It's a complete belief system. It's a faith system. And scientists are blinded uh, to this. Um, let me move. Back, uh, there we go. The, uh, the size of the, there we go, perfect. Uh, evolutionary scientists retract the groundbreaking results, leaving a hole in the theory. So they, they came up with something they thought proved evolution, only to have to retract it later, um, admitting that their belief system uh, blinded them to the truth of their research and their and their biases were there. Isn't that interesting? Let's take a look at this article. I think this is fascinating. Everybody who believes in evolution needs to read this article. A Harvard biologist published a paper three weeks ago recanting a previous article and admitting that he, his preconceived beliefs led him to faulty conclusions, leaving him with a gaping hole in his findings that current evolutionary theory simply cannot explain. The 2016 paper published in Natural, Nature Chemistry, uh, Jack uh, Zostak, a Nobel Prize laureate and professor of genetics, um, made a discovery he labeled a, thin, a synthetic tour de force. He claimed that he had discovered a way for uh, ribbon nuclei, nucleic acid, RNA, to replicate itself. His discovery was powerful proof of, for the evolutionary model of the beginning of life. So he makes this big announcement. Um, and you know this isn't going to be this this retraction isn't going to be spread throughout the evolutionary world. They're gonna they're gonna make quiet this down for sure. Um, but incredibly, he's a Nor Nobel Prize laureate, a professor of genetics, and he makes this massive mistake. His own bias causes him to be completely wrong here because he believed in the evolutionary model, which is wrong, which is fake news, which is not proven by science. RNA is necessary for the production of enzymes, so an essential element for all forms of life. Evolutionary theory states RNA was among the first molecules to develop and that RNA had to uh, exist for life to exist. RNA as it is found in cells today is a complex and unstable molecule requiring its own enzymes to reproduce. For the first RNA to develop at a prebiotic stage in the world's history, it would need to be self-producing and ex existing without en these enzymes already in place. Solving the RNA puzzle, identical to the riddle of the chicken and the egg, is so essential to the evolutionary model that researchers have been working on it for 50 years. They're trying to, they're trying to uh, find answers to a theory that is completely bogus, incorrect, and uh, not supported by science in any way, shape, or form. Zostak claimed to have facilitated RNA self-replication in his lab without these en enzymes, proving that RNA could fit into the evolutionary model and did not spontaneously appear, um, like the, the Bible would suggest, uh, by uh, miraculous creation. His experiment involved combining elements believed to have existed in the primal Earth environment. So first they're making assumptions about what elements existed there, which is unscientific, uh, because we, we don't know, we can't know. And so any result coming out of this uh, could be inaccurate because we don't know uh, you know, if evolution is true, we wouldn't know what exists there in the first place. So it goes on. It involved uh, combining elements believed to have existed uh, in the primal Earth environment, including heat, heating, water, and phosphates, and irradiating uh, the, the result. These laboratory conditions are intended to resemble those of the life-originating warm little pond hypothesized by Charles Darwin, who theorized that the pond evaporated, got heated, and then it rained, and the sun shone. So ribbon, ribonucleotides, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, are simply an expression of the fundamental principle of organic ch chemistry, said organic chemist John Southern at the University of Manchester. They're doing it unwittingly. The instructions for them to do it are inherent in the structure of the precursor materials. And if they can self-assemble so easily, perhaps they should, shouldn't be viewed as complicated. It appears that the origin of life are a bit more complicated than researchers believe. Earlier this month, Tivoli Olson, a colleague, tried to replicate Zozak, Zostak's results, but he could not, huh? So remember, what is empirical science? It is has to be observable and repeatable. Observable and repeatable. If it's to be 
recognized as actual science. Uh, so first of all, they didn't observe uh, the, the, the conditions, the precursors, the ingredients that were there in the primal earth, uh, you know, time. So he's making assumptions about that. So that's not science. That's uh, not uh, observable. And uh, certainly not repeatable. We can't repeat the it because we don't know what was there in the first place, if that is true. It goes on. Um, Zosak admitted his results were inconclusive. In retrospect, we were totally blinded by our belief in our findings. They were totally blinded by their evolutionary belief, by their faith, which is based on nothing but faith. There's no science to back up evolution. We were not as careful or rigorous as we should have been in interpreting these experiments. Incredible. And you're not going to see these uh, people yelling from the rooftops uh, in the evolutionary field. They're just going to go on to something else and say, well, uh, well, we'll keep looking for it. But they're never going to find it because it's not true. It's simply not true. But this scientist is at least honest enough to come out and, and recognize, at least after the fact, um, that he was completely blinded by his belief in evolution. So it goes on, without being able to reproduce RNA in the laboratory in the absence of necessary enzymes, the warm little pond theory of origin of life does not work. The chemical process produced in the lab did not in fact produce building blocks necessary for life. So what do the evolutionists go? Well, they go back to the uh, drawing board. They're not going to go back and reconsider evolution. They're not going to go back and say, okay, well, well, maybe the God of the Bible, maybe that uh, origin of life um, uh, detail uh, does make sense. No, they're, they're going to go back to this drawing board and, and see if they can find another answer for evolution. And there is no answer for uh, evolution because evolution uh, does not exist and does not occur right now. It's not observable in the lab. It is not repeatable in the lab. They confirmed it here with these results. Evolution is not uh, observable or repeatable in the lab. Zostak said that he, that he plans to continue working to unravel the problem of chemical chemically replicated RNA. They can't even figure out how evolution occurs. They can't prove it occurs. They can't duplicate it. Although we are disappointed that the approach does not work, we are going back to the drawing board, like I said, and looking into other ways of overcoming this roadblock. Instead of saying, well, maybe the theory of evolution is incorrect. Maybe this is not how it occurred. Um, they just keep trucking forward as if it's true and trying to prove it when they're trying to prove something that's just not true. RNA is phenomenally unstable and it would not last long enough for a myriad of possible chance interactions of molecules to produce similar life and cells, Dr. Schroeder told Breaking Israel News. The RNA would, uh, would be long gone. DNA is a genetic library, but RNA is the workhorse that makes life possible. Evolutionary science has not proven anything about the origins of life. For sustaining life, the Earth is the perfect platform. The origin is an entirely different question. So evolutionary scientists are trying their best, but they're trying to prove something that's already known as false. It is not observable or repeatable in the lab or in nature. Um, natural selection exists, but you still only have kinds reproducing their kinds. Dogs have dog babies of different shapes and sizes, but they don't have cat babies. Elephants have elephant babies, and alligators have alligator babies, but alligators don't have elephant babies, and so on. They don't even have transitional forms. There is not one single piece of evidence of a transitional uh, fossil or form out there. Um, they are all, they have all been proven hoaxes and false, and or just not understanding uh, what that fossil is. And if, if something is a fossil, you also can't, uh, like Ken Hoven likes to say, you can't prove that it ever had any offspring to uh, to propagate the, the myth of evolution. So evolutionism is false, and the evolutionary scientists, at least in this case, have come out and uh, agreed that their own bias, their own faith in evolution, blinded them and made them jump to a conclusion. Isn't that interesting? So how many other scientists have done studies here that they could not replicate or they thought they did, or they made up a story uh, because uh, their biases got in the way, their faith system got in the way, so that they could not do proper science, which is observable and repeatable if we're talking about empirical science. This is this is big. Um, please share this to uh, your evolutionary friends. Um, this is an evolution sci uh, scientist coming out and saying, my belief in evolution caused me to make an error in the study that I was doing. And uh, in fact, he did not find any evidence 
for evolution at all. If anything, he gave more uh, weight to the understanding that God created the heavens and the earth and that we can't go back further. There is no, there's irreducible complexity in the earth and the molecules and the, uh, in the, in the intelligent design in the building blocks of life. They could not have uh, been created by a bunch of chemicals mixing together. It's just nonsense, and science does not agree with the evolutionary scientists. Check out the article, please. Um, you need to know this because Jesus is coming back soon, uh, so get it get it figured out. Get, get this video to people or this article, whatever you want to share to people who need to hear it. They need to know that Jesus Christ is coming back soon. He is the creator of the, of the world. The Bible is accurate in every way, shape, and form. And uh, they need to get their heart right with Jesus Christ. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.